Life is totally amazing. You are on the ultimate journey right now. It's called your life. You know, from the moment you crash land into this planet, we're searching for something. We're searching for meaning, for answers, for love. We want to know what this is all about. You know, something we too often take for granted? Just getting to be here, to breathe right now, to experience. I mean, we look at those mountaintop experiences of life, like that's what it's all about, you know? Riding that wave, falling in love. But just getting to be is riding the ultimate wave. Every breath we take, just experiencing the air all around us right now, it's really kind of mind blowing. But I tell you, it is a journey. You're going somewhere. You ever stop to think, you know, where am I going? Where's this journey taking me? What's all this about? What am I looking for from this life? So often we forget. We forget to search for answers to those questions that we need to actually be happy. To search for the ultimate answers to those fundamental questions about the meaning of life about who you are, about what happens when you die, about what really makes life meaningful. That's what the search is all about. See, that deepest longing of our hearts for something more, for something better, for a life that's amazing, that longing has an answer. So, what do you seek? You are going to die. <laughs> what a horrible way to start this whole thing. I mean, you can't avoid that. No one gets out alive. And if you've ever walked through a cemetery, you see these rows and rows of tombstones. Everybody who ever lived has that in common. You know, no matter how important that person was, everybody ends up six feet under with a slab of granite on top of them. And each of those pieces of granite, each of those tombstones, has a start date and an end date. And we all have a start date and we all have a, a finite ending, and that's a sobering thing to remember. I mean, you have a certain number of breaths that you get to breathe. You just used about two of them and then you're out, right? But the part we often overlook, it's really the most important part of that tombstone. It's that little thing between those two dates, the dash. That's your life. You're in your dash right now. So what do you want from your life? What are you looking for from that dash? What's all this about? More and more people, I think, live their entire lives just distracted by passing things and never even pause to ask that question. What is this all about? What do I want out of life? What am I looking for? Maybe it's power. You want to be the boss. You don't want to spend your life working for other people's dreams. You want other people to work for yours. Maybe it's money. Yeah, man, a lot of people think that if they have money, then they'll be happy. If you have a nice mansion, if you have the right car, if you have enough zeros in your bank account. Maybe it's to be really fit. You know, if you want some sense of personal achievement, what easier, better, clearer way to get that than chiseling your body. Or maybe it's that next adrenaline rush. You want to feel alive. 
Or maybe you want pleasure. That'll get you what you're really looking for, right? Or maybe you just want to make a difference. You want your accomplishments to be noticed, because that'll be the sign that you really matter. Am I getting close? Have I left something out? We're all looking for something. Not that there's anything wrong with money or skydiving. Not that there's anything wrong with more noble dreams, like I want to provide for a good family. You know, getting all that stuff, that's fine, but I gotta tell you, underneath all those other things we look for in life, there's a more fundamental longing. You and me and everybody who ever lived, what if we're all kind of looking for the same thing? We all have basically the same stuff between our ears, basically the same spirit, right? We're part of the same species. We're all looking for that, for that something. Human beings, all of us, we want to be happy. And I gotta tell you, if you want money, it's because you think it'll make you happy. If you want to make an impact in the world, it's because you think it'll make you happy. If you want a good marriage, it's because you think that marriage will give you the happiness and that sense of purpose and meaning and fulfillment that you've always been looking for. I mean, Aristotle talked about happiness as the end of every action, as the thing that we're made for. The Dalai Lama said that we seven billion human beings, emotionally, mentally, physically, we're all the same. Everyone wants a joyful life. Blaise Pascal had a profound reflection on happiness. He said, all men seek happiness. This is without exception. Whatever different means they employ, they all tend to this end. The cause of some going to war and others avoiding it. It's the same desire in both, attended to with different views. This is the motive of every action of every man, even those who hang themselves. We all want to be happy. There was a Harvard study done over the course of 80 years. This is an unprecedented study of hundreds of people. And it wanted to gauge how they turned out in life and what made them healthy and successful in life. And the headline that summed up the study said that good genes are nice, but joy is better. And they actually found that the person's sense of happiness and contentedness at the age of 50 was a better predictor than cholesterol for how healthy and happy they'd be when they were 80. Happiness is what we're all looking for. It actually even makes you healthier. So where are you going to find it? Where are you looking to get your happiness? Guess what would taste good right now to everyone in the car? Candy. Hey, just look around. The whole world is promising you happiness everywhere you look. Get the item that adds to your personal comfort. If you buy this, if you do that, if you hit this goal, then, then you'll be happy. Notice how your neighbors look with admiration as you drive out. Take the keys and see what driving pleasure really is. So take my word for it. It satisfies. So we're all looking for happiness, but you know the problem is, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> you know, so often we, we dream too small. And we confuse passing pleasures with that fundamental happiness that we're made for. I mean, really, how much happiness do you want? How long do you want to be happy for? A couple minutes, a day, a year? I mean, ask your heart. How much happiness does it want? If you pick up any psychology textbook, in it you're going to find the social sciences have been studying this for a long time. My name is Jim Owens. I'm a counselor working in private practice. I've spent most of my professional time counseling working with people in addictions. I think we all have to recognize that we have appetites in this life. And some of those appetites, we get met pretty easily. We're hungry, we eat, we're satisfied. We're thirsty, we drink, we're satisfied. We want to achieve something, we accomplish something, and now we're satisfied. But we also have this sense that all the eating and the drinking and the productivity in the world might not satisfy us completely. We're hungry for something, we have an appetite for something in our very core of our being that just nothing on this world can satisfy. You know, we all know what it's like to have a great meal or have a great conversation. And those things feel good, but of course the experience fades away. How many medals do we have to collect? How many trophies do we have to collect? How many meals do we have to collect? 
where we then feel full somehow. And we hunger for that experience to last, to persist, to really, if we could have it our way, to go on for eternity. I mean, if we really want to get serious with this question, I think we have to ask ourselves, if you could be happy forever, would you turn that down? In the depths of our souls, there's a growling. There's this gaping sense that there's something more I'm looking for to fill it. And I'll tell you, you could fill your soul with everything this world could possibly give you, and it's still looking for something more. That makes no sense at all, unless there's something more out there to fill it. Or you know what, that would be the cruelest joke ever, the cruelest joke the universe has ever played on us. If you had that longing and there was no final answer to it, when we don't direct that longing, when we don't stop and ask, what do you seek to your own heart? What's it made for? What's it made to be filled by? We can end up destroying our lives. I mean, how many people destroyed their lives because they're restless? This woman didn't satisfy me. I'm moving on to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and I leave a trail of broken families behind me. This drug didn't satisfy me. I'll try the next one. This amount of money isn't doing it for me. So I'll do this, that, or the other dishonest thing to get whatever it takes to fill this heart, and it's still not enough. In the United States, 20 to 25% of us are walking around every day suffering inside a mental illness, typically anxiety or depression. It's 18% of us, almost one out of five, who have pervasive level of anxiety that we live with every day. On the outside, it looks like we're a really happy society, but inside, I think you'll be surprised to see that people are very deeply struggling. You have people with beautiful mansions and fancy cars and full bank accounts who are suffering, struggling with this very difficult question of, why do I have all these things and yet I'm still not happy? You know, we live in a world where the pace is so frantic that you literally can go for weeks, months, sometimes years at a time without ever stopping to even think about, am I happy? A am I really fulfilled? And life just becomes this endless, meaningless pursuit of trying to get ahead and trying to get the next thing and trying to stay on top of all of, you know, the, the spinning plates that I've got going on in my life. I'll be happy when I get the degree, when I get the wife, when I get the career, when I get the accolades, I'll be happy when. This starts to get related to a concept we have in psychology called destination addiction. And we're so bad at putting off happiness. We think we're going to get it someday when we get this one thing in our life that we don't currently have. Maybe the first mission in life as an adult is to find the meaning and purpose in your life because you will not find happiness unless you know what the meaning and purpose of your life is. You've got to know why you're here, what you're made for, and what you're supposed to be doing with your life. In the NBA's great pool of talent, no trait is more respected than hustle. It's a burning desire to be first at everything and exceed one's own limitations. Hustle can even compensate for a height disadvantage or a lack of quickness. By giving 110% on every play, Hustle has made Bill Henslick the best he can be. I was just the Wisconsin farm boy. There were a lot of great players. I had to figure out a way where I could play. I became a defensive player. Johnson over Henslick can't connect. Foul on Magic Johnson. I wanted to play. I wanted to be on that court. I was fortunate enough to have a chance to try out for the 80 Olympic team, and I was one of the last players to make it. Because of that, my draft prospect vaulted from maybe being a third or fourth round pick to the first round by the Seattle Supersonics. When I got done playing as a player after three back operations, Denver started searching for a head coach. I got a call. Well, to me, this is a special head coaching job because I want to be here. I like Colorado, and, and I feel I'm ready. I, I'm ready, and I'm excited. So without further ado, I'll just answer some questions, and we can get to work. As the season starts off, we're all set to move forward, knowing that this year I was going to coach, the first year was going to be extremely difficult. We weren't going to win a lot of games. Our best player, we, one free agent we signed, tears his ACL, he's done for the season. We had other players that got hurt. It got even worse. 
I was playing sometimes five rookies. You don't win in the NBA with five rookies. We start off the season, I think we go 0-10. One stretch, we lost 23 straight. It looked like we may have the worst record ever in the NBA. This is brutal. It, it was so tough on my family, on me, uh, the media pounding on you. That was the toughest point, toughest year of my life. I'm praying to God every day, God, what is your plan for me? I was fired. I was called into the GM's office. I walk out with a box, just a box of my stuff. And I'm thinking, what am I gonna do now? My life had been about basketball. I loved the sport. And then that rug got pulled out from underneath me. God had a different plan. I started a foundation with my best friend and our mission is about preparing kids for the game of life. 1998, we started our complex. It's 14 acres. By 03, everything had culminated into opening our Gold Crown Fieldhouse. We took it from an organization that uh, we were serving maybe 150, 300 kids, to suddenly, now, today, almost 18,000 kids we serve. You know, oftentimes in life, you look back and, what if I got another contract extension? What if I made more money? What if I had won a championship? All those things, yeah, that would have been really cool. But would it have fulfilled me? At that time, I thought, well, yeah, maybe that would have fulfilled me. But now, doing what I'm doing, it, it's been incredible. The reason why you're here is to search for that meaning. When you can search for that meaning, that meaning in your life, that's when you're going to find true happiness. Everybody arrives at that place in life at one point or another where they come face to face with that big question. What's the point of it all? Is there a point of it all? <laughs> maybe at that, at that point in time, you look at religion and think, oh, I've been there, done that, it's got nothing for me. Maybe because this religion's been, been presented to you in, in a way that just turns you off. The fastest growing religious group in the Western world is the nuns, people who don't identify with any particular religion. In the United States, nuns recently surpassed Roman Catholics. And the younger you get, the more and more people you see identifying as nuns. You know what else we're finding? More and more people are unhappy. Among Generation Z, they're arguably, according to all studies, the most anxious, most depressed, most despairing generation in history, where so many people are just trying to find a sense of purpose and meaning to life and, 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 they're, and they're coming up empty. There could be all sorts of valid reasons that people are looking at religion and saying, that's got nothing for me. And decide to look for happiness in all sorts of other places. But I'll tell you, it's not working. What if we're throwing away religion because of what we think it is? or how it's been presented to us in the wrong way, rather than what's really there. And what if in the process, we're just throwing away the answer to every question of the human heart? It seems like we're, we're, we're just overlooking the answer right in the palm of our hands. It's been there all along. You know, everywhere you look, people are throwing answers to you answers to those fundamental questions of your longing heart. You find self-help programs everywhere. Guys, this, this journey, this is not self-help. You know, one of the ways that self-help programs come up short is that they tell you to be happy, but not why. <laughs> We're gonna address the fundamental answers to those fundamental questions about the meaning of life, why you should be hopeful, where are you gonna find the love that you're made for. Guys, this is gonna help you in a way that you could never help yourself. Jesus' first words to humanity in the Gospel of John, kind of striking. He turned to two people who were following him and he said, what do you seek? What are you looking for? He knew the answer. I want happiness. I want joy. 
In the depths of our souls, there's a growling. There's this gaping sense that there's something more I'm looking for to fill it. What is all this about? Not just Christianity, not just the church. What is human existence all about? We need firm answers to those questions, good answers to those questions, to live a good life, a life with meaning. We need those answers for happiness. It's time to invite the world right now to get back to the search that makes life amazing. Every dream you've ever had for an amazing life, every hope you've ever had for happiness, every longing for that love that would fill your soul, it's got an answer. Don't be one of those people who goes through life never even asking the question, never taking a step, never taking the journey. Don't go through life just existing. The journey starts today, right now. So, what do you seek?